evil players in the history of football. Welcome back to Footflix. So, today I was thinking whether our benevolent players have done something evil or not. And guess what? They have. And today I'm going to share that with my people, but before I do that, do like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more interesting information. Talking about evil and leaving Cristiano Ronaldo's humiliation behind, nah, nobody can deny his track record. If we talk about humiliating a manager, uh, players have done that, but what if someone humiliated football's greatest goat? This is something only Ronaldo can do. Back in 2012, Ronaldo wanted to remind Barca fans who's the real dad. And while the ongoing controversy on who's the real goat, this was the right time to prove it as he was just one goal behind Messi. And his title. Yeah, people, I'm talking about who the real goat is. In his next match against Granada, he scored not one, not two, but five goals with an eight minute hat trick giving the Real Madrid a nine to one victory in an attempt to regain the title. But no one can match Dr. Death's record for evil. Yeah, I'm talking about Pablo Alfaro, a defender who was born in Zaragoza, played for seven clubs, including Atletico Madrid and Barcelona, and appeared more than 100 times for Zaragoza, Racing, Santander, and Sevilla. In 552 appearances, he was dismissed 30 times, a red card in every 18 games. God, oh God. To put things in perspective, Duncan Ferguson, who shares the record for the reddest cards in Premier League history with eight, received one every 34 games. The reason Saleh Faro, a licensed doctor, is on this list is not that he was careless. Rather, it is because of what he did. He crossed the line when playing Atletico Madrid in a Copa del Rey match in 2004, when forward Touche shoved his finger up Rocky Blanco's ass following a clash. It's out of order even though it's not a crime. He acquired the label Dr. Death as a result of his evilness, as well as his reputation for having razor sharp elbows and generally behaving violently. I receive a bad deal in 60% of games, Pepe Pepe once complained. If I foul someone, it's like I've killed him. Talking about the GOAT, every person has some evil within themselves. Being the best player of all time with global fan following, Messi has at some point turned evil. In 2009, Barcelona played Chelsea in the Champions League SF. Messi was absolutely horrible, failed to score home or away. This was the born of Eufelona. Chelsea were denied four clear penalties. Barcelona should have been eliminated, and thus, this CL win is void. While in 2010, Barcelona played Inter in the CL semifinals, Messi, as is often the case with him in big games, was absolutely rubbish. He recorded zero assists or goals over the two legs, and Barca were eliminated. In the 2010 World Cup, Messi played five matches. In all the tournament combined, he scored a grand total of zero goals, zero in five matches, and registered a single assist only. Argentina were eliminated in the quarterfinals. Talking about recent news, in 2019 UCL, Messi stat padded against a weak opposition but went missing again when the going got tough. He was knocked out by Liverpool after winning the first leg 3-0, another all-time Champion League bottle job. Former Liverpool goalkeeper Jerzy Dudek took an astonishing swipe at Lionel Messi, labeling him as provocative and rude. But Bishop de Centrebeck, who is 35 years old and has a criminal record that any hardened criminal would be proud of, has even gone beyond the point of evilness. Throughout his 16-year career, he stamped on Messi's hand, kneecapped Danny Alvarez, slapped Iniesta, and twice headbutted Thomas Miller and Kit Javier Casquero. The latter incident ended in the Portuguese international receiving a 10-match suspension after punching Juan Albin in the face. The violent Pepe was a great player when he wasn't on suspension. This was demonstrated by his nearly 230 Real Madrid games, more than 100 Portuguese appearances, three Champion League victories, and, of course, the 2016 Euros, 
where he was the star player for his nation. Fans all over the world questioned whether Pepe had a conscience or if he was just pure evil in the wake of his conduct in the 2016 Champions League final, which included shameless diving, faking injuries, and the constant harassing of the referee. And Doni Gocaccia, although having played for Athletic Babao and Atletico Madrid, won 39 caps for La Roja, competed at the World Cup and the Euros, is now forever known by his nickname, the Butcher of Bilbao, which is a term of abuse in some sections of Spain and throughout Europe. With a horrifying tackle in 181, he tore the knee ligaments of Barcelona's burnt shoe stuff, a wound from which the German never entirely recovered. Two years later, he swallowed this up by almost robbing one of football's all-time great players. He threw himself through the air with both feet off the ground during a match against the Blue Grana, slamming Diego Maradona's left leg halfway up the shin, breaking the magician's ankle in an instant. Ah, this hate. Maradona described the hit as wood-breaking and dubbed it the most violent foul in Spanish football history. His manager, Cesar Minotti, demanded a lifetime suspension and claimed the Spaniard belonged to a race of anti-footballers. The Spanish authorities gave him a 10-game ban. Even worse, he failed to learn from his mistake and received an 18-game suspension for kicking Maradona in the chest during the 1984 Copa del Rey. Speaking of hatred, no one can break the record of Kylian Mbappe in terms of egotism. The player believes he is bigger than PSG and needs to get his ego checked. After feeling betrayed by the PSG over failed promises, he memorably stopped running and turned away in frustration, having not been passed to during a PSG counterattack against Montpellier earlier this season, and named himself as second favorite for the Ballon d'Or, admittedly, perhaps correctly, behind Karim Benzema. His teammate Neymar was also being angered by this egotism. But is Neymar necessarily evil? There is no doubt that Neymar is one of the greatest football players of this moment. Despite his magic qualities of the pitch, he got a lot of hate during the World Cup for dramatically faking injuries. Neymar is the pinnacle of bad behavior. On the pitch, where he is making continuous effort to sabotage the game by pretending he is hurt, I do know defenders are not easy on him and he gets substantial beatings every match, and trying to make his opponents look bad. But also, off the pitch, he is showing behavior that must be off-putting to both management of his team and the supporters. Why fake injuries? For attention? Fan following? Sympathy? Ugh. Can you imagine a murdered footballer? Well, Gavin Grant was. At the age of 16, Watford released him and his football career came to a grinding halt. On his infamous Stonebridge estate in northeast London, he strayed into a life of crime. In 2008, former England caretaker Peter Taylor, Grant's manager. Wickham championed Grant's abilities, but two years later those words were turned to dust when his former life caught up with him. He was found guilty, along with two others, of committing the execution-style homicides six years earlier under the pretext that he was responsible for a home invasion robbery of his cousin. Grant's career was gone after receiving a 25-year prison sentence. But none can beat the calling of executing 52 people by Alexander Villaplain. He was a French midfielder who won 25 caps for his country and captained his nation at the inaugural FIFA World Cup in 1930. A talented player who played for Antibes in the first ever league in a season, he had questionable morals, which were on display from an early age. His side was disqualified from the competition for corruption, and he ended the following season and his career in prison for his part in a horse-fixing scandal. After getting out of prison, he was then employed by the Nazis, who recruited members of the criminal underworld to conduct their counterinsurgency operations against the French resistance. By 1944, he was head of a section of the North African Brigade. His fierce personality and ruthlessness earned him the nickname SS Muhammad. His extreme brutality was shown by his actions in 1944 in Ayman, in southwestern France, when he ordered the execution of 52 people. Yes, people, I'm talking about mass murder. 
He was caught later that year, and the former French captain was sentenced to death by firing squad. A truly evil man. But if we are talking about pure evil, Barry Bennett is on the top of the list, being the most disgusting man. Now, why? The 64-year-old was a prolific sex offender and a predatory pedophile who preyed on young boys. I can't even imagine. He notoriously worked with Crew Alexandra, who was known for a high-quality youth academy during the 1980s. He was found guilty of 55 cases of abuse and sentenced to 454 years in prison. During his trial, he was described as sheer evil. Some of the players above are really respectful and admirable, no offense. But if you want to know about more controversial jersey numbers, click the video right here.